In this training session, we're going to look at the SNMP trap daemon that's part of the network services. So in the management console, expand network services and then click on the trap daemon. On the first tab, the general tab, which is um, available on all the other daemons there as well, we can configure the main properties of the daemon. So in this particular case, we can actually toggle it on and off and also configure the UDP port it's listening on. While you can change this, it's usually not recommended and not necessary to actually change that port because all of the most network devices that are sending out SNMP traps will expect to send to port 162. Just like with syslog, you can limit the number of traps that the trap daemon will accept. So in this particular case, it's 1000 traps for 24 hours and traps are usually a low volume event. So a thousand for 24 hours is fine, but you can adjust that. And then of course, just like with syslog, you can also configure from which remote hosts, whether IP addresses or subnets, uh, traps are accepted from. The database and event log tabs are very similar to the syslog daemon, but on the SNMP trap daemon, we also have a MIBs, communities, and users tab. Event Sentry ships with a number of default MIBs, but in most cases, you're going to want to expand that to support the devices that you're actually using that you have in your network. So MIBs essentially translate the numerical OIDs that SNMP uses into descriptive names. So MIBs are theoretically optional. You do not need them. SNMP will still work. It will be just very difficult to make sense of the information that you're getting from SNMP. So SNMP traps will just be numbers um, versus if you have the MIB installed, they'll have a somewhat, hopefully somewhat descriptive name depending on how the vendor formatted it. So MIBs uh, usually come from the hardware vendor. So it'd be something that comes from Cisco, FortiGate, whatnot. Um, there are a number of standard MIBs uh, that are part of SNMP that are vendor agnostic. So this would be uh, general properties like, for example, network network issues, uh, CPU usage, things like that. They will be in RFC based MIBs, but anything that's specific to a uh, device will come from the vendor. So here are the MIBs where you configure the MIBs in Event Entry. If you want to add a MIB, simply hit the plus icon and browse to the MIB file that you want to import. And you can see here that there's a number of MIBs that ship with Event Century um, that you can automatically, that you can import without having to necessarily obtain them from the vendor. So we do have a few in there, but, but mostly they are vendor agnostic MIB files. An exception would be Fortinet FortiGate, for example. Depending on which version of SN, SNMP you're using, you'll either want to configure communities for version one and two or and or you want to set up version three users. So SNMP version one and two C are a little bit less secure. Information is transmitted in clear text. And so is the password. However, um, the password still has to match. So if a SNMP trap is sent with a community that is not listed here, uh, public is always there by default, then event Sentry will not accept that trap and it will simply not show up in event entry. Whether or not you need SNMP version 3 mostly depends on the type of devices that you have on your network and the type of information that's going to be transmitted. If we're talking about things like just um, CPU usage, alerts, maybe disk space traps or Ethernet ports up and down, it may not be um, a big deal to still use SNMP version 1 and 2C. However, SNMP version 3 is significantly more secure. And you can see that if you click the plus icon, because you can see here that, first of all, traps are authenticated when you use version 3, and they're also encrypted, meaning that somebody who intercepts network traffic, if the trap is, if the version 3 user is actually using encryption, then you won't be able to decrypt it. The database tab, uh, similar to the syslog daemon here, we configure to which database the traps are written to. So by default, uh, this is set to include, meaning that all traps are written to the database and you can specify exclusions by hitting the plus icon here. This will search every trap binding and if there's a match, it will basically exclude that trap. You can also switch it around and only store specific traps in the database, but in most cases, that's not something you'd wanna do in this 
uh, not a very common setting. But the event logs, it works similar to what we seen with syslog. If you enable it, it will log all incoming traps to the application event log. And again, you can hit the plus icon here to exclude certain traps. Or, and this may be a little more common, you can go in and say, I don't want to have any traps written to the event log except those that contain specific text. Then you would set it here and you would specify the text of those bindings you want to match here. And just like with the syslog daemon, you can see here with which event ID those traps are going to be written to the event log. And from there on, you can then set up alerts, uh, for example, for email, if you want to get notified and not just search the web reports for that data.